You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. Friends, welcome back to the Rachel LaForce Show. That's right, it's me, Rachel LaForce, and this is my show. Um, I'm finally really glad that I, some of you know this, where it was like I named the show the Rachel LaForce Show because it just makes it easier to Google. Like the amount of, you know, white women in their 30s that are like, heal yourself, like life after addiction, manifest this. Like who can keep up, you know? So I was like... Out of all of the things that I pitched, and I was like, how about we just name it after yourself? You know what I mean? That's okay. Oprah did it. Jenny Jones did it. Kelly Clarkson did it. Why can't Rachel LaForce? Friends, if this is your first time listening, welcome. So glad you're here. This is a hashtag spiritual podcast from me, a comedian, for people who aren't spiritual. What I mean by that is a lot of people find me by way of other things, and maybe you're not, you know, really gilded in a spiritual practice yet. Maybe you are a spiritual teacher, and this is just a fun uh, way for you to come and hang out with me for an hour once a week. Lots of different ways uh, that people find me. But today is a solo episode, and a lot of them recently have been stream of consciousness, Meaning, well, most all of my life is. I improvise everything. I've been an improviser forever. Um, I don't, I very seldom plan. Shocking, I know. But also, I think the only way that I'm really going to start to figure out, like, what is it that I really want to say is just to start talking because as somebody who has spent so much of their life as a people pleaser and somebody in Hollywood who's like, what do you want me to do? I can do this. I can do that. I can sing. I can dance. Like, whatever you wanted me to be, I will be that. And so I've spent the last five years unraveling that and really figuring out, okay, I learned that I can, you know, I take direction very well, <laughs> uh, but what do I actually want to say? What do I want to do? And so a lot of the quickest way for me to do that, and that's also a spiritual lesson in and of itself, you're welcome. There we go. She's just dropping gems. We're not even two minutes into the pod, right? Um, is when you're learning a new skill is just to like do it, is be immersed in it. And that this is part of that, which is really unraveling what is my own truth as far as like how do I see... Um, Today, we're going to be talking about power structures, uh, growth edges, our experience. We're going to cover a lot of ground today, and I will do my best to finish thoughts. It makes editing clips for this podcast very difficult because I'll start a thought, and I'm so ADD that I will jump to the next thing. Um, So, you know, I am neurodivergent. Thank you so much. Um, which is just fun for all of us. Cause now we just, we don't sound like we have like learning disabilities. We just sound like we have superpowers. So I think that's worked out, uh, for all of us millennials who had to like go to a separate room to take tests. So you didn't have a panic attack. No, just me. Cool. Fun fact. Uh, I did leave the SATs the second time that I went to take them because I got so much anxiety that I left. And then I just drove around for, four hours because I didn't know what to tell my parents. So that's just a fun little fact about me. Um, Also the SATs for the birds. What a ridiculous way to gauge if somebody's ready to go to college. Just saying. (sighs) Guys, we're going to talk about growth edges today. Here's why. A lot of it is because of my... (sighs) I actually have somebody coming up on the podcast. I just said that I was going to finish thoughts and I didn't do it right there. Did you see that? How quickly it happens? Stay with me. I've got somebody coming up on the podcast, hopefully uh, somewhat soon. They are a wonderful astrologer and uh, healer in their own right. And they uh, were sharing with me kind of unraveling their Christian upbringing. And I was very attracted to that because a lot of where my anger comes from 
from the political landscape, which is kind of what we're going to get into today, is this idea of what I identify as actual darkness and and hate being disguised as God. Well, we're Christians. We're doing this for God. This is what God would want. Not my God. I don't know who y'all are praying to, but no, no, no. Um, so a lot of my real like triggered and like unbridled anger comes from that. And then it also comes from that because there are a lot of really wonderful Christians. There are a lot of really wonderful people out there who do have this beautiful faith. And I feel like really do, you know, like hashtag like walked as Jesus walked and all of these things. And so there's this interesting place that I feel where I'm clearly still sorting it out. Um, and, you know, even talking about where, when we talk about culture wars and everything I talked about on the pod last week, where it's like, there's this huge, like, we're so divided and it's the left versus the right. And, you know, if you are traditionally on the left, which I'm going to guess 90% of you listening are, um, and many of you are probably still of the mind of like, the left is right, which is a hilarious slogan. Am I right? Um, that, you know, the left is doing everything like in our favor and the right. And I don't think that that's true either. (laughs) I think there's certainly on the right side of history when it comes to women's rights and trans rights and, you know, all of these things that are in the zeitgeist right now, for sure. That's non-negotiable. But to say that like your team, quote unquote, handled I'm not going to go into COVID because that's who has the time, but it, that it was like that any of that was handled appropriately or as much as we love to just be like, oh, we're here for the little man. And it's like, if you, here is also how I have actually learned how much the government does not care and both sides sit on the same, start to make a little bit of money, start, start some businesses, start like finding out more and more about tax law, Right get into some trouble, get arrested, get like anything where like you really actually start to get your fingers. By the way, I've not been arrested ever, but certainly not recently. But I'm just saying where it's like when you actually start to see how these systems are designed to keep the majority of us small, to keep the majority of us um, trapped, uh, whether that's in like our financial situation or within like low socioeconomic neighborhoods and whether that's based on race or just on class, that is the same on both sides. So I think, and obviously it's a bigger discussion because I'm sure some of you are listening to this and you're very triggered. That makes you angry and that's okay. Again, these are ongoing conversations. Hear me out, okay? But I'm just saying where I think that's where a lot of us have really gotten wrapped up in all of this, whether you're on the right side and you are because you're like, well, I am a Christian. I'm a good person. And so then you ramp up because you feel like everybody's attacking, you know, the right side and they're not listening to you. And then, or you're on the left and you're like, if you don't care about every single thing that I care about, then like, you know, you're a bigot. And it's just so easy and quick for all of us to be manipulated when again, meanwhile, the people that are in the highest positions of power are making billions and billions of dollars off of us. And all of this, again, is that it is a currency of chaos. I'm not saying it's not real. I'm not saying we don't need to pay attention to it, but there is a balance. There is an ownership that we all have. There is a sense of responsibility that we have to pay attention to like, what is this chaos? What is bullshit? And that I mean, that's, again, in versus, let me finish the thought, versus what is peace? How much can I actually control? That's why I'm actually more angry about these trans uh, bans that are happening in Tennessee and now all over. Um, And, you know, where it's like, oh, drag is ruining our children and like all there's all of this loud, loud noise from the right. The number one reason that it pisses me the fuck off more than anything is it's like, y'all don't give a shit. You don't care. You do not care. Do not come for me. I know that you don't. You want to know why? All of a sudden, this is a major issue. All of a sudden, it's like, no, anytime 
the people, these, these giant, you know, legacy media, these people in positions of power, they don't want you to pay attention to the actual shit that's going on. They're going to create a boogeyman. And this is this year's boogeyman. That's it. And I understand this is where it goes into growth edges because I have this conversation with my husband a lot. I have this conversation with extended family of mine that are not in LGBTQ, TIA, you know, queer communities. These people who have not been immersed in these communities, uh, friends with these people or seen, you know, what these people have gone through. I understand how certain people could get riled up into that really quickly. Oh, well, if there's, you know, a drag queen, you know, who's going to make my kid gay or whatever, like to folks, if you are of like mind with me, you hear something like that. And that's an insane thing. That's an insane thought that that is your first thought. Right. But I also need to leave space and compassion. You can disagree, but I would like to leave space and compassion for folks where, you know, if they're not calling for the eradication of these people, because that is happening and that's, that is something else we're going to talk about. But for folks that just feel uncomfortable with this stuff because they haven't experienced it, I don't think that makes me a good neighbor to be like, well, you care about it or you don't, or you're a bigot. It's like, there's no space for anybody to learn in that way. There's no space for somebody. It's okay that somebody is uncomfortable. You know, it's like, it makes sense to me that like, a straight Christian dad might be uncomfortable being around a drag queen. Here is this, um, you know, presumably a man who's so comfortable in their sexuality and who they are that they dress up in drag and they sing and they're loud and they're big. There's so much freedom there. Of course, that's going to make somebody uncomfortable. And so I think when, and we do this on both sides where it's like, we want everybody because everything has gotten so heightened, it's like, well, if you're not completely on board with me, then get the fuck out of my way. And I understand that. I understand why, you know, as I, I have another friend, I will not name them, but um, that uh, they're lesbian and they were uh, either like in a um, sexually abused or there was definitely some abuse that happened with their youth pastor. And they've posted about it on their, their social media. And it's like, you're, you're going after my friends and, and my family of this queer community. And then meanwhile, here was this, you know, quote unquote, straight white youth pastor who was preying on all of us. So that's the other side of this argument, right? Where it's like, it's so, again, that's where I get so angry at all these quote unquote Christians that are out there being like, oh, this is an abomination to God. And it's like, what God? Who are you, who are you talking about? You know, where it was like when they, they first were proposing these bans in Tennessee and I posted on my Instagram where I was like, man, Tennessee's really going to freak out when they learn about the Catholic Church. You know, where it's like there are systems that have been in place for generations that protect abuse. Bottom fucking line. I'm talking families, schools, the Olympics. You know, if, if you think that because something doesn't look the way that you know it to look, that that's danger. I, I, I don't know what, I, I really encourage you to have a thought about that. Because, you know, I, and I'm also not to say that like there's never been anyone in the LGBT, you know, in the queer community or the, a drag queen that also has not, you know, been a victim of and or uh, victimized others through abuse. I'm not saying, I, I don't think that that's true either. Because I think all of these things are nuanced and I think they're situational and I think it's that abuse exists everywhere because it's traumatic, it's generational, but we don't want to talk about that. Christian churches for sure aren't fucking talking about it. The Catholic church isn't talking about it. So that's where my anger comes from. I haven't even gotten onto growth edges. I'm just telling you why I'm fucking pissed. <laughs> but that's where my anger comes from. Because you want to talk about this, you know, this, this urgency and this sense of chaos that's happening and you're stripping the rights away. I mean, I think it's Tennessee. Um, and I apologize that I don't, I don't have, I'm super pregnant right now. So I have no, uh, retention whatsoever. And I typically don't have a high reading retention rate anyway. Remember the whole neuro neurodivergent thing that I shared? Um, but I, or maybe it's Florida actually, that's talking about that they want to take trans kids away from supportive parents. 
Well, yeah, so this is this is my uh, producer offhand, Alex Gatlin, everybody's favorite producer and soon to be second baby daddy. Um, th- that is, yeah, where they're uh, in Tennessee, they're taking away gender affirming. Now, is that for, that's for all trans, not just for minors? Oh, for youth. Okay. And then can you look up the one for, uh, I believe it's Florida and they're proposing that they want to, they want to take children out of homes that have supportive parents for, uh, gender reaffirming care. So like if, if Jonah decided that he wanted to be a girl and we were in support of that and we lived in Florida, the courts could try to take Jonah away from us. This hasn't, I don't believe it's gone through, but it's. Right, these are there's like over 200 I think proposed bills now. Or actually I think it's over 300 it's a because long, long For sure. Well, and again, that's Right. Well, and but that's also why I said that is smart where Alex was like, you know, these are proposed bills, but I also think that's again where I talk about we're adding to this rightfully so, but what is that currency of chaos? And that's why I always say, like, sometimes it's hard for me because, you know, being on this, like, quote unquote, like, spiritual space and, you know, it's like on this walk of anti-racism and what, like, really wanting to make myself as open and, you know, believe all women and, you know, all of these things that we talk about that are, you know, to some people are considered woke and then to my, you know, to most I, I, as I identify open-minded and open-hearted people is just letting live people live their damn lives. <laughs> you know, like there's, again, this goes back into the whole growth edges thing of like, here's something that like, I don't understand polyamory. I, I don't really, like, I have friends, I have a few uh, friends that are polyamorous. Uh, you know, as somebody who's already been married four years, I'm sure if, you know, Alex and I could figure out a way to make, we'd be like, yeah, cool. But that's just not the type of people we are. Do you know what I mean? So there's (laughs) my husband. I am not interested in that. Um, and also as we always joke where it's like, we're already so tired to even like date each other. How are you going to find time to go and sleep with other people? Um, but I'm just saying where it's like, there are plenty of people that like, do you have that lifestyle and that works for them? So it's like, who, who am I to judge them and be like, oh, that's wrong or that's this or that's that. Where it's like, if you are not hurting other people, that's the other thing where I think the, the these Christians in the media where that anger comes from, where I'm like, you nobody is hurting you. No one is coming for you. And you guys are the ones that are coming out here and going after everybody and being like, they're ruining our children. They're ruining this. They're ruining that. Let me tell you how many generations you guys have been saying this and what is the actual percentage of the ruined youth versus the amount of ruined youth that's come from secret abuse, that's come from, you know, having to go into gay conversion therapies, from, you know, all of these that have been denied and denied and denied themselves in the name of your God. That's fucking people up. And so, you know, it's like, that's just, I'm still unraveling what all of that means to me because I, I do think that the idea of God, the idea of religion, the idea of communion with other people is insanely beautiful. And I want more people to have that sense of connectedness in their life. But I am insanely resentful and I think angry that that people continue to act as though they're really doing something in the name of God where I want to be like, do you know, like... Or even just like uh, people on the right, like uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, where I'm like, my friend, you need to find a therapist and some support because you look like a drunk woman at a, a basketball game who's uh, like about to get arrested, yelling and screaming and being nasty. That's the other thing. I mean, the the vitriol and hate and mocking that... I see coming out of a lot of, and again, I don't think that this is all Republicans. I mean, again, that would be the same to say of like all Democrats, which is also why, you know, the more I'm sharing about these concepts where I'm like, I think of a lot of where we have fucked ourselves in the participation of all of this is becoming so glued to these identifiers 
that no longer are signaling and or identifying anything, you know? And so how, how do we reverse this? I don't know. I mean, again, like this, I'm not here to save the world. You know what I mean? Like many of these things are way above my pay grade. Um, you know, where it was like, even just like the history of like, the Catholic church or even why like then the Protestant church created itself because they could, you know, it's like almost everything that we have now was created because, uh, you know, at some point, like some, you know, presumably white dude, like wasn't allowed to do the way that he wanted to do it. So he was like, all right, well then we're going to go and like start it and do it another way. Right. So there's so many systems and religions and, you know, all of these things that are in place. And now we have this giant global connected economy where it's like things are so much bigger than us. If you feel overwhelmed, good, nice, you're awake, you know? (laughs) Like, it is a lot, but that's the chaos of it. And I think, again, why this idea of growth edges is really important because I think individually, like, we really have to get to this place on either side. And if your choice is, it's not my choice, but I understand, you know, it's like, I, I remember seeing it through, you know, the hashtag great white awakening in 2020, where, you know, all these white people are like, oh, whoa, like racism is real, you know, and like your black friends being like, e- yeah, thanks for showing up, you know. Um, so I, I understand if there are certain people that have been more oppressed, it's not the, you know, oppression Olympics, but just for purposes of the sentence of like, I understand if people that have been abused or taken advantage of or racially profiled or unable to obtain certain things because they, you know, um, they're a man, but they want to present as a woman or whatever these things are. Like, I understand if that's been your experience and you're at this place where you're like, cool, talking about growth edges, Rachel, but like, fuck anybody who doesn't let me be who I am at this point. Fair. I'm not here, like, what I'm sharing right now is not to, this is not a um, persuasive essay, (laughs) you know? It's just what I'm observing, and I think what I'm really wanting to kind of light a candle for, like, you know, lead the charge on with this podcast and with my voice in general is there is a path to healing. Do I think that we're going to fix it? Do I, you know, and I know there's a lot of spiritual new agey people and they're like, we're making a new earth and like, we're going to raise the vibration. And I think all of those things are beautiful. I also think that like, there's a reason why we all are human and we're all here to have this like wildly aggressive in some ways experience. Um, and I think that when the goal sometimes is so far out from somebody's current reality, it's hard to get them there. Versus a lot of why our society is so sick is we're still keeping secrets, right? It's like you still always, you know, again, primarily the GOP, where it's like, you know, that's why we got to build a wall because fentanyl is coming from Mexico. And it's like, dude, the call's coming from inside the house, bro. (laughs) Like, We know that the Sackler family created the opiate crisis and no one has served a single fucking consequence. So again, we can keep blaming all of these things that we we want, but until we acknowledge like, you know, why these things are really happening and why they're continuing to happen, like that's, that's again where like my anger comes from on all these things where it's like, oh, well, no, they're the reason why this is dangerous or they're the reason why this isn't changing or, you know, if this side did this thing. And it's like, no, nobody's talking about the truth of what's actually happening with any of these things. So until we actually want to get our fucking hands dirty and everybody wants to look at their own shame and everybody wants to admit the truth, we're just going to exist in the chaos. And... Again, I don't have any real sage advice of like, you know, how we're going to get it back. Um, And I wish it was that easy. But it's not. 
And that's why it's this individual responsibility, which I actually think is like such a beautiful thing because it's not our job to change the minds of everyone or else around us. And it's not our job to change the minds and like, you know, be out in the streets all the time and doing these things. And like, it's exhausting. It's our job to look at what are our growth edges? Where do I get uncomfortable and why? Or am I okay to be uncomfortable so that my neighbor can be safe? Like, what does that feel like? You know, why do I believe that everybody's out to get me? Why do I believe where it's like, what is actually happening in your community? Who's actually around you in your community? Who's there? What's happening? You know, it's like, I even know a handful of people who I know that have, you know, been abused, not by drag queens, and, you know, are still like holding up this narrative of like, you know, that's, it's, you know, trans men in the bathroom, or it's this or it's that. I'm not saying there shouldn't be fear there. Fear is okay. But let's talk about what's really going on. You know, if we need to talk about why is abuse rampant in our societies and why aren't we doing anything about it? Okay, then let's have a fucking conversation. But if the conversation is we're just going to keep pointing fingers at people and different groups of people and and using incredibly blazon or excuse me, brazen language. I'm not on board for that. And I will never be on board for that. And I don't stand for that. And, you know, I want to make compassion and have space for people and understand that, you know, it's like I have a very interesting perspective. I was raised by, you know, divorced parents who also, by the grace of God, had a pretty beautiful relationship and got along. You know, I didn't see a lot of back and forth fighting. My parents didn't talk shit about each other, you know, but it was like, when I was with dad, I was at much more traditional churches. When I was with my mom, she's, you know, like a hippie, spiritual Unitarian. I always had this really interesting intersection, which I'm always like, and I'm shocked that I'm this weird, you know, <laughs> where I'm like, that's, and I was like an only child. There wasn't even anybody else in my family who could have like contributed to this nature versus nurture. Um, but that's what I mean where it's like I've had that interesting perspective and then I've, you know, toured the country and parts of the world doing comedy, you know, making people laugh. I've always lived in really big cities. Like there's a ton of exposure that I've had through my life that plenty of people haven't had. And so does that mean that like I know more than they do? No. Or the people who have experienced more than me? No, no. Again, this isn't this, nobody gets a medal. There's no, this is not the Olympic Games. It's nothing like that. It is the awareness and acceptance that the world is huge. I mean, it's like one of my stand up jokes where I'm like, you know, the fact that we think everybody's going to get along, I've probably said this 75,000 times on the podcast. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, but the idea that like we're all going to get along and, I'm like, there's 40 million people in California alone. I can't think of seven people that I respect, you know? Like, we're asking way too much, and then we're boiling it down to these sides and saying that, like, oh, if only, you know, see that side, that's, you know, they're the reason that this is not working out. It's like, I don't, I, and listen, I actually, I, I honestly wish it was that simple. It would be great. If it was that simple, but it's not, and that's a lie and it's not true and it's not real. And, you know, again, do, are we facing some really serious stuff? Is that really scary? Do I have people in my family and in my own life that, you know, I really feel deeply for that are having to like experience what's going on and things like that right now? 100%, 100%. So, Again, with me sharing, this is not like, let, let bigots off the hook. Like, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. Again, I keep wanting to talk about, like, what is actually going on behind this chaos? Why is this actually existing? And the more that we can get to a place where we can see, you know, what, who is great Oz? What's actually going on behind the curtain? We can bring our own nervous systems down a little bit. We can bring our own life into focus a little bit. Where are we putting our money? Where are we, you know, who are we supporting in our communities? 
How are we, you know, where it's like, I just can't make myself crazy anymore reposting every single thing on social media and saying that I'm either doing something and or that that's not affecting me. I just, it's just not a long-term solution. So, you know, we all have these growth edges and they're all in different ways. And so, you know, where it's like, where are those for you? What are the things where you're like, oh, I don't know. I haven't really thought about that. Or like, that kind of makes me uncomfortable. Or, you know, I, like maybe I do have more like internal misogyny than I think. Or yeah, I guess I don't know why I'm giving all my money to that organization. Or, you know, it's just all of these things where it's like, That's the shit that starts with us. And I don't think that we should be shamed for having vastly different experiences in a wildly unfair world. You know, it's like all of my beliefs around spirituality, quote unquote, and my my own practices you know, for me, it's like that is about connecting to a higher power. But even as I I move into, I've talked a little bit about it on the podcast that I'm going to be starting uh, what's called the Misfit Light here in Atlanta this summer. And it's, uh, you know, creating spiritual community through uh, comedy is really the idea. So it's basically comedy church. We're going to make a space where people can come on Sundays and feel like they can have a space and really connect with themselves and with their with their community in a way that is somewhat, you know, hashtag spiritual, but isn't a uh, church or synagogue. And you can also um, have all of those spaces as well and then join us. It's not a one or the other thing. And that's even so much of the purpose of creating this space and almost this community and this movement is that reminder we don't, what happened to all this of like, nope, you have to choose. You have to choose. It's like, wait a minute, you're telling me that that God, the creator is whatever, is you identify, uh, created all of this and all of these different, you know, it's like how many different types of trees are there? And all of the, like, that there's so much in this world is so vast and we all look so vastly different and we have all of these different like strengths and weaknesses And then you mean to tell me that we're all just supposed to choose one way of doing multiple things? Dramatic pause. I mean, that's just insane. Like, just even that thought alone is is the antithesis of the world that your God created. So I just really want to continue to like try to figure out what all this means to me and talk with people that are smarter than me and, you know, that are more academic than me, uh, that have been doing a lot of this work for a while. Because for me right now, it's just plain passion. There's like that, you know, uh, I want to be very clear. I'm not uh, positioning myself as a voice or authority at this point. Um, I just am full of of curiosity and I love people and I and I I think it we're just doing ourselves like such a just gross disservice just such a gross disservice where it's like you know I mean we do like this is lame but it's like we do need each other you understand that right like not everybody can be a doctor and not everybody can work in an Amazon you know warehouse not everybody can be a dentist not everybody knows how to like you know change their oil there's a reason why we're all here in this microcosm together and we've gotten to this place where we just don't appreciate. There's zero appreciation for each other. And I'm saying we all have to be best friends. Again, I don't like most people. I like love chatting with people. My husband calls me the mayor whenever we go anywhere because he's like, you got to talk to everybody. He's like, you're the only person I know that's like calls people by their, like whatever their name tag is. You got to stop and talk to them. How's your day? And, you know, And I do, I love people in that sense. But as far as like the company I keep, I like to be at home, (laughs) okay? So like, I mean, of course you, if you're listening, of course I would love you. You and I would be best friends. Um, So, you know, yeah, I'm not saying that like you got to have everybody over to the cookout. That's not what I'm saying, you know? 
And I think tribalism is okay. And I think it's okay that we, you know, want to be with people that, you know, reflect our beliefs and our likes and all those things. But it's like where we've left out common decency and appreciation and love. And I think that's why, you know, I'll, I'll kind of I'll start to land the plane here. That's why. I just have so much anger towards uh, Christianity as it's being prescribed to us in the media where, you know, and it's always like, oh God. And I'm like, not my God, right? It's like uh, Father Greg, uh, Father Greg Boyle, uh, that's one of his, I believe it's one of his quotes and something like, you know, once you meet uh, the God of love, you will fire all other gods. And, you know, I, I just, it is, there's nothing more earthly and human to me than other humans telling other humans, it, like, what is Christ-like or what is God-like, you know? And, um, you know, I'm a huge proponent of where I'm like, yeah, I, th- I think, you know, Jesus was a, 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 a brown shoeless healer, that's who that guy was. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, you you guys think that like, you know, they'd really be propping him up on a chair at the GOP right now? No way. He'd be enemy number one. So I, I just think that there's this, where are we at that we have such a need to find an enemy when in reality our biggest enemy is typically the enemy that lives inside ourselves? It's us. Friends, it's our own anger, our own denial, our own denial of sense of self, you know, and like, it's not lost on me that, you know, it's like the amount of people that ran gay conversion therapy, uh, you know, institutions or things like that. And then it's like, so-and-so found on Route 66 sucking dick. Like, yeah. Oh, shocker. And, and I don't have this feeling of like, ha like, look at you now you're shamed. It's like, I have so much compassion for these folks where it's like, oh my gosh, these people hated themselves so deeply that they created these entire systems to entrap and make other people hate themselves as much as they hated themselves. So that's what I mean where it's like, you know, there is no outside enemy. It's us, friends. You know, again, I already use this phrase, but it's like the call is coming from inside the house. So how long are we going to keep going letting that phone ring off the hook being like, oh, I don't know, somebody else will get it. No, that's not for me. No, that's not for me. You know, we have a lot of work to do, all of us, myself included. Mostly first, I just want to get this baby here and then I can go from there, but you know what I mean? Oh, I feel like that's good. I feel like I've been just preaching into an abyss for long enough. Uh, Producer Alex, how long, do you you know how long uh, we've been going? 38 minutes. Look at her go. Not quite a tune-up, not quite a full episode. Oh, but always a good time. Friends, this has been the Rachel LaFour Show, just in case you're confused at all. Um, May I humbly ask, if you like this podcast, with all of the other chaos that you will share on your social media, would you be so kind as to share this podcast and say that you like it? Would you be so kind as to go on to Spotify, Apple, leave me a review? Uh, These things are so major. Go follow me on YouTube. We're building up my YouTube page. Um, I really am making this promise to you. I know so many of you have been so kind in saying how grateful you are that you found me and you have no idea. I'm about to get emotional. That's how pregnant I am. How much that means to me because uh, I keep hearing if, you know, if you build it, they will come. And so I'm so grateful that you guys are here. Uh, So if you want more of this on a greater scale, uh, more production, more money, more shows, all of the things, uh, this is not just me. This is us now. We're in it together, baby. Uh, So uh, yeah, go uh, find me on YouTube. Share, like, subscribe. You live in the world. You know all of the things I'm going to ask. Also, you can join my monthly newsletter. You can go to rachelforce.com, poke around there and and uh, grab my monthly newsletter. I've got some coaching spots coming up. 
all of the offerings, all of the things. Some of you know, I'm also an ordained minister and I can marry you if you believe that. Uh, And I would love to marry you. So uh, lots of ways to connect with me. I cannot wait to connect with you. I'm so unbelievably humbled and grateful that you're here. I really mean it. Tune out, tune in. Love you, mean it.